Thanks for coming back to the Minuteman Prep YouTube channel. My name is Ben. This is the Vitamin Flash Speed 1500. Now, this unit did get sent out to me to review. It will in no way change my opinion of this unit. You're gonna see firsthand exactly how this unit performs doing all these tests and the results will speak for themselves. That does come with the user manual as well as a wall charging cable, which does not require an adapter brick. I love when companies do that now. Basically the adapter brick is now inside the unit. When you have like a laptop or any type of device where the charging cord has one of those big black bricks on it. What's happening is it's actually converting the 120 volt outlet power that you plug it into, into DC power, whether it's 48 volts or 12 volts, whatever it is. And that's why that brick always gets so hot is it's transforming that energy. This is just a NEMA 515P plug with a C13 plug right here. And so these are easily replaceable. They're very affordable. It's so always love to see when companies do that. Besides the user manual, it also has a car charger, a USB-C to USB-C cord, and then a USB-A to USB-C cord. These are about 18 inches long right here. So this review, we're gonna get into all the specs, see if this is a good unit, drain it, charge it with solar panels, do all of that. Let's go ahead and get right into it. I'm not sure how you say it, VTO man, vitamin is what I'm gonna call it. VTO has been around for a while. They had some previous power stations, but they didn't have fast charging built into them. So that's what's new about the Fast Speed 1500 is it has AC fast charging built in. It'll charge from zero to full in about an hour because it has a 1548 watt hour lithium iron phosphate battery and it'll charge at 1500 watts from an AC outlet. From PV or solar, PV stands for photovoltaic. From solar charging, you can get up to 400 watts input, and the charge parameter of that is 30 to 60 volts. And I don't know the exact amperage for the charge controller, but I believe it's either eight or 10 amps. It's got the storage compartment here on the top. I actually really like having storage compartments in these units because you just put all this stuff, the stuff that you'd normally misplace right inside here and you always know that you have it with you. The pure sine wave inverter is rated to 1500 watts output continuous while having a 3000 watt peak. Pretty much everything's on the front here. We have our AC input, which is just a C14 receptacle, which the C13 plug goes into. We have a 5521 DC barrel port. This is actually your car charger port, but you can use solar input on it as well, as long as it's below 20 volts. So you could connect a 12 volt solar panel because they operate from about 18 to 20 volts. You could plug that in right to here and it's gonna give you up to 100 watts additional input. And then here is where you have the 30 to 60 volt operating voltage solar input. They did specifically say in the user manual that it's operating voltage, which is your VMP rating, where generally you wanna use your VOC, which is your open circuit voltage. And the difference is, is VOC is the voltage the panel makes before it's actually dumping power into the battery. And VMP is your power after it starts dumping power and you'll have a voltage change. So on your VOC, it'll be a higher voltage and VMP will be a slightly lower voltage. Usually about a 10% difference between your VOC and your VMP, kind of depends on the panel. But for example, on a 100 watt panel, your VOC is usually around 21 volts and your operating voltage, your VMP is about 18 volts. So I guess in that one, it's about 15% difference. So you could actually get upwards of 500 watts of solar input into this, as long as you had 400 watts into the Anderson power pole adapter and then 100 watts into the DC 5521 barrel port. We've got two USB-Cs here rated to 100 watts. There is a jump start for your car battery on here, which is really cool, because that means that this is rated to 12 volts output. They don't include the jumper cable though, so that part's frustrating. And I'm not 100% sure what this blue connector is, so we'd have to find out what that is. And then here is a battery expansion port using that same type of blue connector. So you can get an extra expansion battery for this and have a total of a little over 3000 watt hours for your battery capacity. If you have 320 volt outlets right here, rated up to 1500 watts. So that's about 12, 13 amps output. And then we've got four USB-A with one of them being a 3.1 charging port. You got your normal 12 volt cigarette lighter port here, as well as two other DC 5521 barrel ports rated to 10 amps output. On the sides, we just have our vents. And then on the back, you do have a light as well as your specs all right here. And you can see the certifications and all the basic info right there. Now, because this has lithium iron phosphate batteries, which is also called Life PO4 or LFP, 
because it has those, you're looking at easily having more than 3,000 cycles on this before you reach 80% capacity, which just means if it's a 1,548 watt hour battery now, after you've done 3,000 cycles, which is draining it down and charging it back up, once you've done that 3,000 times, all the way down, all the way up, then it'll be 80% as good as it was new. It means it's about a 1200 watt hour battery after you've done that so many times. So realistically, you're never gonna use all those life cycles unless you're permanently using this off-grid. But I don't know that I would use this off-grid simply for the fact that we don't have enough solar input. It's great that we have a battery expandable spot here. I don't have an expansion battery with me. 3000 watt hours is pretty good for just a refrigerator, but beyond that, you probably aren't gonna be able to run very much. Maybe Wi-Fi on top of that, and you would for sure want to get 400 watts in on this input and 100 watts in on that input to make sure that you're getting the absolute most amount of solar input into the system to fully recharge it each day. It does come with a base 12 month warranty and there's a way to get an extra 12 month warranty. I believe you have to register something. Maybe it just comes with 24 out of the box. That part I'm unsure of. To turn it on, all you have to do is turn on one of the three sections. You either have your AC power or your DC USB or your DC cigarette lighter ports. You just have to turn one of those on and then it'll turn on the screen and then you can turn on the inverter right here just by pushing this button and you can turn on USB, you can turn on your cigarette lighter ports. Everything is controllable from these buttons right here. To make sure that this thing works properly because historically not all systems work as advertised, what I'm gonna do is put a 1500 watt load on this and just see if it'll run it for at least 15 minutes. Many times inverters or batteries are not rated to the actual rating of the system is what they're advertising, which doesn't make any sense, but it happens more often than you think. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a heat gun on this, put on a max load, and if it runs for at least 15 minutes, that tells us that the battery and the inverter are matched properly, that it can handle that high of a draw. So I've tried running my Hisense 7500 BTU portable air conditioner. It could not handle the surge on that, so it did not run that. And I've had trouble trying to get it to read out close to 1500 watts. So I've got a watt meter here. It says we're using 1493. It's kind of fluctuating just a little bit. Uh, that's about as close as I can get it to 1500 watts while not exceeding 1500 watts. And here it says we're using 1700, then 1800. So it's changing quite a bit. So the readout on the actual vitamin flash speed 1500 is not as accurate as what just this watt meter is right here. But I've got that heater and this heat gun running and I'm just gonna leave this running for about 15 minutes. As long as it can do that, then we know we're good to go. I've already drained a decent amount off of it. So as long as it continues to run without any hiccups and we got good voltage, then that'll show us that the BMS in the battery and the inverter are paired properly. All right, we're still running at 1,497. So pretty much the exact same wattage. Doesn't seem to have any difficulties at all running these. So that's good that the inverter and battery can keep up. So now I need to test the solar input. I've got two 200 watt solar panels, so 400 watts total on this line right here. Now this doesn't come with an Anderson to MC4 adapter, which doesn't make any sense at all. So vitamin, if you're watching this, you need to include that. That's kind of dumb, but I happen to have my own here. So I've got my Anderson power pole connector and you'll notice I've got these two to one branch connectors on here. And the reason that is, is so that way I can test voltage while this is running. So we're at 43% right now. This is gonna be really hard for me to show, but the first thing I wanna show you is what voltage are we getting before the solar panels are connected. I'm gonna put my black into my negative and my red into my positive, and you can see we're getting 38.1 volts. It's a slightly cloudy day. We have really clear sun right now, but there are clouds on the horizon, so I wanna get this done quickly. So we're at 38.2 volts. I'm gonna go ahead and plug this in, and without changing anything, you're gonna see live how this voltage changes. Right now, we are looking at VOC, open circuit voltage. And this will take a second because the MPPT charge controller is turning on. It's detecting the power and then determining the best way to use it. From there, that voltage will change to our operating voltage, which is VMP or volts at maximum power. And we may not get the full 400 watts here today. I'm not expecting that. I'm getting 230 right now. But you can see we're at 31.5 volts. So we had a, basically a seven volt change between our VOC and our VMP. And what the charge controller is doing is it's going to adjust this voltage as best as it can to allow for the most amps to come in to get the most amount of power. Power is actually 
the technical term for watts. So we're just gonna see how many watts it can get in, getting about almost 300 right now. And just due to the weather, I won't be able to get a really, really clear test. Actually, it's, it's quite clear right now. It should be pretty good. It's 2.45 in the afternoon, so we're still within the solar peak hours. So we should be getting pretty close to what it should be able to do. My guess is if it's a little bit clearer, we would get maybe 300 to 320 watts. I have no idea for certain, but that would be my estimation. Right now we're hovering right around 29.3 volts. Very interesting. Just for reference sake, the reason you have this little clamp on top here is so you can check the amperage. So what we can do, so we can take, for example, this wire, first thing you wanna zero it out, and then you put it around a wire, and it's gonna tell you how many amps are coming through. So we're getting 9.7 amps, and then you multiply that by the volts we were getting, and that'll show you the watts. And that makes sense because we were getting 29.3 volts and we're getting basically 10 amps. It's about 290 watts. Volts times amps equals watts. So if you have a voltmeter, you won't have this clamp on top. If you have a clamp meter, you'll usually have a voltmeter built into it as well. This one's from Fluke. I really like it. Fluke is definitely like high end, commercial grade. You don't need this size for uh, home use. You can get a very affordable one on Amazon or local hardware store. So the good news is, is that it will run the 1500 watts as advertised, and it is working well with the solar panels. But that's one of the things is why it's so important to have high solar input on a power station. It's because when you have days that aren't perfect weather, you need to be able to offset that much power loss by being able to have more panels. If this was rated to 1000 watts of solar input, we'd be getting two and a half times the amount of solar input right now, which would roughly be 700 to 800 watts, which would be is super impressive for charging this up because you would charge it up in a couple of hours. But without running anything at the same time, like a refrigerator, at best, you're gonna expect to get this from zero to full in a single day while running one refrigerator as long as it's sunny. Outside of that, it's just not enough solar input. Now we can offset that a little bit by adding another 100 watt panel here. I'm not gonna be doing that in this test, but that's how it would work is if you wanted just a little bit more oomph then you could add a single 100 watt panel, but then you would need a whole other set of solar wires and your solar panel outside to do that. The bottom line question of all of these tests that I do and reviews of these power stations is, does it do as advertised? And this is doing pretty much as advertised because it is normal to not get the full solar input because just solar panels in and of themselves usually only output about 80% of their rated capacity. So that would have put this down to about 360 watts if we're using two 200 watt panels, then 80% of that would be 360 watts. We didn't see that today, but I'm blaming that on the weather, not on vitamin. But you may find different results on your own. This unit, I'll have discount codes and everything like that. Anything that they're willing to give me, I'll be willing to put down in the description below. So if it does interest you, you can just click that link. It'll take you and get you a discount whatever it is there. The results speak for themselves. I appreciate Vitamin sending this out, but it's not gonna change my opinion in any way, shape or form to give some glowing review saying it's the best thing ever. It's simply not. But does it do as advertised? I feel like it does. And I think the results speak for themselves in that way. If you disagree, put the comments down below. If you do agree, put the comments down below. If this is something you think you would use, put it in the comments down below. If you don't think you'd use it, put it in the comments down below and tell us why. This is a community where we can all help each other understand the benefits and drawbacks of different systems. For me, I prefer larger, more powerful systems. So maybe Vitamin will grow on this and bring out a system that can do 240 volt power in the future. That's up to them, we'll see what happens. In the meantime, this does as advertised and for that, I give it two thumbs up. But would it be my top choice for going into an emergency situation? Probably not. It's only 42 pounds, so it is still quite portable. This may be something that you just put in a shed that you only need to run the lights and maybe a few outlets. Like this could be a set it and forget it type item that's affordable, you just set it out there and you don't have to end up running power to a shed or to an outhouse or something like that. For that, it would be great. In a very small type van life setup, it could be really great because a van life setup, you don't usually have a lot of room for solar panels on the roof anyway. So you could easily fit two 200 watt solar panels up on the roof and you could be trickle charging this everywhere you go. And you could run your laptop and a coffee maker and a microwave and lights and all those simple things because this has a strong enough inverter and a big enough battery. But if you're to run a full size fridge and running lights and fans and all those different things, probably not going to be enough. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. Like and subscribe. Be prepared. I'll see you all in the next video.